What time do you have? What? The tying. You were just checking your father's old watch when I caught you, yes? I belong to my father. It is a lovely heirloom. It is quarter till, Mother. Time, as we both know, is certainly of the essence. I know that, gentleman. And so, Anthony Bridgerton. Lord Bridgerton. Bridgerton? The Viscount? Viscount Bridgerton. Brother. Brother? Anthony. Sister. Mother. Duff. Anthony, you are here. Of course I'm here, sister. This house carries many memories. I fear I may have upset the Viscount during our game. Um, you're near our father's grave. Do you not wish to retrieve The game is over. He rarely goes near the site if he can help it. How did he die? He was stung by me. To see a great man felled by such a small creature, it was so... Father! It was humbling. God, I'm sorry. Oh, wow! I'm so sorry that it was you who was with your father that day. Anthony! Go! I witnessed you change the day he died. Do you know you did not even weep once? You are the Viscount now. But then after your father died, a wall went up inside you. I know you miss him, <laughs> but we all miss him. You stopped laughing altogether, in fact. It was as though you had become an entirely different person, consumed by the expectations of others. You judge me, yet you cannot possibly understand the responsibility of heading a family because you've never had one. This is the duty I must fulfill. And what choice did I have? I am fulfilling my duty to this family, Mother. She is my responsibility, as are you. I fight for the family that I have. That is what outweighs anything else. Of course, without my father here, that responsibility falls upon me. And gentlemen are left with no other choice, Mother. An affair of honor. She is my sister. <laughs> Bastard! You truly esteem me so little. It is as you and me and the very Bridgerton name. After I apprised you of my wishes and you proceeded to ignore them. The contract of Burbrook will be drawn up and you shall marry him. Yes, brother, I do. But I would very much prefer to have your blessing. Then I'm afraid I must disappoint you. You have. Now, be grateful it is done. In more ways than one. But surely you can understand that family must come before all else. It is rather easy to be selfish when you have no one else to whom you must answer. <laughs> I changed so that our family might survive. You certainly make it look difficult. I mourn for you, brother. All of these decisions that you seem to make and then resent us for. I've never wished to succumb to the blind delight of being in love. I finally determined the difficulty, love itself. You must say something now, Anthony, before... What I want is beside the point. I cannot so indulge myself. I do not need feeling. My feelings are of no concern. You are the Viscount. Your responsibility will always be to that title above all else. And what if you get yourself killed? Then the title and estates will pass to you. You both get to choose your passions and adventures. I suppose that has always been the privilege of not being the firstborn. What of you? What of me? A uh, gentleman is here for you. Is your plan to fuck her forever? Your mistress. Sienna. You must simply know some people are not meant to be together. Stay with me, stay. <laughs> no, I tell you how much we might wish otherwise. Your position in life remains unchanged. Sienna, please. You shall marry, siren heir, and guard your family. And I, I shall always be the woman you may love in darkness, but <laughs> never in the light of day. I tried. You said you would always protect me. You shall leave. Come back to me. Come with me. You must know. I... I tried. What I know is that you are lost. You may hurt now, but the pain will pass. I am doing the very thing I have always done. No apologies. I am looking out for myself. You need to let me go. You're right. Leave the young lady alone. It'll be as if you never loved her at all. Have you not done enough? I'm sorry, Sienna. 
It will be as if we had never met. And how have these precepts served you? It's a work in progress, to be sure. Removing it from all romantic relations shall make me all the better for it. No more distractions from responsibility or being waylaid from the sensible path. What matters is my responsibility, which has always been to wed. Your responsibility. You, fulfilling the promise that every firstborn son makes to his father before he dies. You shall need sire and heir. I must do what is necessary. It is only out of the greatest love of my family that I aim to choose a bride with my head and not my heart. I seek an amiable partner with whom I may share a pleasant life, untouched by heartbreak and the ravages of grief. <laughs> Have you found a wife yet? Where is your wife? Just because you are dedicated to this family does not mean that there should be no room left for love, Anthony. Because I know my duties. Simply pick the least objectionable and get a wed, bed and bread. He stated rather clearly that he seeks a wife only to fulfill his duty and in fact does not believe in love at all. As if love had become some... some weakness. And that is what you now wish. Instead of your greatest strength, and that is not you. That is what I now know. What I need is what I have, and that is a list. I've already compiled an index of the season's eligible misses and have arranged interviews. <laughs> interviews? Tolerable, dutiful, suitable enough hips for childbearing and at least half a brain. I thought all of the young ladies were beautiful. Not particularly, and all the young ladies are the same, like young ladies. Truly is a sparse crop. Do not tell us you were hoping for a love match. Love is the last thing I desire. But do you read? I can still barely feel my toes. And as for every other eager chit you pushed in my direction, I would happily never lay eyes on them again. Anthony. I'm looking for perfection, Mother. You want the best. Anyone here you've not yet rejected? Do you have any thoughts about children? You may be cavalier, but if I must leg shackle myself in marriage, the lady in question should have more to recommend her. Do you not ever get tired of pretending to be so perfect? It's exhausting just watching you. You will end up alone with such expectations. Never met a man as brazenly presumptuous. You do not even know me. It is what you have always wanted. You're quite certain how well you know me. Your father took his role as Viscount seriously, but he also loved deeply. You deserve the feeling that I had. Why will you not accept that the love match between you and father was the exception, not the rule? I can never be the cause of such pain. No matter how cruel and hard-hearted everyone else may find me to be. And it would break my heart to see you spend the rest of your life in regret. I dare say it would break your father's heart, too. Do you think he's looking down on you now? Do you ever wonder what father might say on a day such as this? Ashamed. He was the only one you ever truly respected. The only one you ever listened to. You have to show me how to do that! Come along. Am I like him at all? Or was he more like you? Father? Your father was the best man I've ever known. Losing Edmund was the most difficult time of my life. You were barely even there. <laughs> After he died. Every day I get up, I, I get dressed, I feed myself, I try to breathe in and out. And the pain that I felt. Edmund was the air that I breathed. Beyond description. No, there is no air. There's a conversation for his lordship. He is asking of you to decide which one of us should live. His lordship is a child. I feel even sorrier for myself because most of the time all I'm thinking is that this little baby did not do me the kindness of killing me so that I could be with my husband. You kill the baby, you save the mother, you cut the mother, you save the child. It is not your choice to make, it is mine. It is his lordship's choice. Edmund is his lordship. The choice is Edmund's. It can only be Edmund. Because he loved me. I'm sorry for everything that happened in the days of father. He loved me so much. We should send for the doctor. She's still hysterical. Edmund should be here! And yet I myself am cursed to remember every waking moment. Edmund! Do not leave! <laughs>
<laughs> do what you want. But there is one thing that has given me at least some modicum of solace. Lilacs were his favorite. They're quite lovely, are they not? It's knowing that I would still choose the life I led with him each and every time. And I would undoubtedly feel the same pain I felt all over again if I had to. Because real, true love is worth it. No matter what. He was courageous and never afraid to fight, not just for his family, but for everything else, too. All it takes is one clean shot to the heart to foul even the greatest of beasts. Ah, I see you are not one for losing. It's impossible. Are you in a losing mood? I've failed each and every time. It's more about confidence. Anthony is a Bridgerton. Is that not something in all of us that requires a challenge? You do love gloating about your victories, do you not, brother? You near threatened to beat me the last time I touched that. You exaggerate. Is this still a friendly match, or do we need to find some armour? He can be exasperating. Anthony, he's been tempted. But now it's time for me to secure my final victory for the day. But what happens when such duty is in conflict with the heart's true desire? I've always imagined Anthony to be with someone more like him. Sharp, quick, a little too exacting. <laughs> Are the young ladies of London truly so easily won by a pleasing smile and absolutely nothing more? So you find my smile pleasing? I find your opinion of yourself entirely too high. He is incorrigible. He is not for my sister. I shall make sure she sees of it too, one way or another. You will not make her happy. You are not to go near that man. Do you understand? Daphne deserves better. He cannot give you the love you deserve. She's rather thorny, I take it. Indeed. Do not speak to me or my sister ever again. You will never speak to my sister again. She is pompous and arrogant and quite sure she is the best in every situation. You. Oh, she sounds like a terrible nuisance. She says you are the one who knows best in every situation. Perhaps Miss Sharma can teach you a thing or two. <laughs> Why is it that you dislike me so? Because... Because you vex me! Because she is aggravated! Unless you do not wish to dirty those fine boots of yours. Do not worry about my boots. You think too much about it. And you do little. And now you question my judgment. Only because you question mine. Must you always? You are the one insisting. Obstinate, inflexible, unyielding to good, plain, common sense. It is not amusing. <laughs> did not say it was. Did I say something funny? I believe you did. Well, the Viscount certainly seems to have nettled you. You were the one who then looked at me. You looked at me! Not in the way that you did. How exactly did I look? You should take the opportunity to get to know one another. I only wonder if you truly know each other well enough. Mm. Unnecessary. Is that not what marriage is for? This is the most important choice you will ever make. If you have doubts, do not simply set them aside. But it is not simply a partner that marriage provides. It helps if you share similarities. You decided that stag was too large to shoot before you even touched the trigger, I'm afraid. Because one way or another, these kind of feelings always have a way of coming to the surface. But does she know your true feelings on the matter? And what kind of feelings are that? Marrying a woman for whom you clearly hold no great tenderness or love. Love? How long do you plan on punishing yourself for wallowing in such misery? I'm intent upon this marriage. Because you love me. I understand you. We cannot escape our roles. I've gone too far down this road to turn back now, Beth. A gentleman cannot take back his word. You must keep your word. You must marry my sister. You must marry her as soon as you can. But a woman may. I cannot marry you, Lord Bridgerton. I may not know exactly what true love feels like, but I certainly know what it is not. It is not deception or a role to be fulfilled. The one that makes it impossible for you to look away from them at any given moment. When all you are able to do in their presence is to fight the urge to lean forward and, and touch their lips with yours. Mother's not the only one who sees the way you look at her. 
Just keep looking at me. It is when the rest of the world goes quiet. No one else matters. It's not eyes that meet, but souls that dance. Are you going to ask me to dance? The shaman may have this dance. Settle into each other. Make room for each other. You are the bane of my existence. It is maddening. How much you consume my very being and the object of all my desires. Do not lose her, Anthony. Guys! It is all my fault. I was fearful of losing you. It's my fault. You cannot lose her. I know I am imperfect, but I will humble myself before you because I cannot imagine my life without you. And that is why I wish to marry you. I love you. I love you. I think they look beautiful together. Beautiful indeed. <laughs>